You let's see ya. What happened? How do you wish to new talk? Big money. What happened? I got all you colors. Cause you want to go This is the first time you talk with a big win the pack 12 championship. Good boy, good boy this year. Mickey Wally, what happened? Uh, you have all you can see this team. Uh, you have all you can see this team. Uh, you will see. Good uh, boy this year. Uh, what happened, Caleb Williams? This all your fault. Good uh, boy this year. Uh, double F. I will Fortnite you. In a minute, bye. More thing, bye. What up, bye? Ha 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 ha! USC, come on now, y'all know what I'm about to say. USC, uh, what happened? All right, I know it's kind of corny now, but seriously, how did you lose? <laughs> Look, I'm not even going to do all that. I'm not even going to do all that. <sighs> what a game. I did not. I don't think anybody saw this coming. Maybe you had Utah pulling off the upset, but same thing with Michigan and Ohio State. Nobody had Utah destroying USC. What was it, 47 to 24? I'm trying to gather my thoughts. First things first, I already know everybody's going to be talking about this. Ohio State fans, I know you're happy about this. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, rather simple. If USC lost the game, in which they did, Ohio State was going to make the playoff, and they're going to. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you're an Ohio State fan, you better go buy some Utah merchandise because they beat USC not once, but twice this year for you guys. If that didn't happen, you wouldn't be getting into the playoff. Now, here is the weirdest thing about the game that just happened, just went down, that most of us, if not all of us, watched because it was really the only game on tonight. It was very odd for the reason that it seemed like, what, the first mm, eight, ten minutes of the game, USC was going to blow out Utah. I saw all these Ohio State fans tweeting out, yeah, season's officially over. We should have beat Michigan and took care of business. The next thing you know, a quarter, two quarters later, Utah's blowing out USC. I mean this with no disrespect. I mean, you can take it as disrespect. I don't really care. This is the most Lincoln Riley thing ever, and he can't get over the hump. This is becoming the signature Lincoln Riley. Have an outstanding, have an awesome regular season, and then boom, disappoint in the conference championship like today and the postseason. That's something that nobody's talking about. That stigma is going to be around Lincoln Riley until he changes it. Until he wins a championship, everybody's going to bring up how he chokes. And it's not just him, it's every single team he's coached. Before I say anything else, I want to say this. Caleb Williams, I don't care they lost this game. Yeah, he threw that bad interception late in the fourth quarter. The dude was basically playing on one leg. He, he is my Heisman Trophy winner. It's not even close. This has been a also not just a weird season for the playoff, but a weird season for the Heisman Trophy. Because in reality, nobody has stood out. Nobody's earned it. But I think you got to give it to Kayla Williams. He played out of his mind just to have USC in this ball game. It's unfortunate that USC's defense is like one ply of toilet paper in your local high school. Now, take nothing away from Utah. And I want to pull up these stats real quick because I have no idea how many total yards Utah had. But they was, and it wasn't that Utah was passing all over them, but when Utah was running the ball, they was breaking one, two, three, four tackles left and right. On a lot of their touchdown runs, they were breaking, what, two to three tackles every single play? Okay, got to pull it up right here. Utah had 533 total yards of offense. Don't really seem like that much. 310 passing yards and over 200 rushing yards. But like I said, that's not really concerning. It was all the broken tackles. USC and Lincoln Riley... That is a weakness. They got to fix it. But we knew that heading into the season. The offense was going to be A-OK. -okay. It's going to be flawless for the most part, at least. It was the defense that concerned me with USC. They're flat out pathetic, terrible. One of the worst defenses out of any team that's ranked in the top, not just top 10, but the top 25 at this current moment. There's not too much to say about the game. I'm just going to move on to the juicy stuff, what everybody wants to talk about. Ohio State and what's going to happen in the playoff tomorrow and going forward. Hold on, let me get my phone for this because I tweeted this out and I know this is going to be an unpopular take, a 
hot topic, whatever you want to call it, but I firmly believe it. I tweet it out, Matt, throw it up on the screen if you ain't too tired. I know this won't happen, but Utah is just as deserving to be in the playoff as Ohio State. They now have two top four wins in a Pac-12 championship, plus they didn't get dominated. You know who I'm talking about. They didn't get dominated in a game this year. <sighs> like I said, firmly believe that. I know Utah lost to Florida. That was... A close game. I know they lost to UCLA. I know they got three losses, but I don't think, and I've told you guys this for the past week, I haven't switched up. I don't think Alabama, Ohio State, neither of them deserve to be in the playoff. So, with that being said, I think Utah, I know it's not going to happen, but if anyone deserves to be in the playoff out of Utah, Alabama, Ohio State, I think Utah's got an argument. They beat a top four team. Not once, but twice. Think about it. And they're a conference champion. Kind of the same thing with South Carolina. I know South Carolina, they're 8-4 and four and have no business going into the playoff. But there's not a hotter team in the country at this current moment than South Carolina. They beat two top 10 teams. I'm just going to cut straight to it. It is a dang shame that Ohio State is getting into this playoff because they're not a top four team. I've said it once. I'm going to say it again. You get blown out. You get dominated at home by a team that doesn't have their Heisman contending running back. You're not one of the best four teams in the country. But hey, like I was telling one of my friends about it, I'm not opposed to this. I'm not mad about it because it's going to give us something to talk about. I'd much rather talk about Ohio State in Georgia than USC in Georgia. No disrespect to USC. It's just a more intriguing matchup because Ohio State fans, for some odd reason, they're still cocky. They still think they got one of the best four teams in the country after getting blown out last week. Look me in the eyes. You cannot make this stuff up. I know one thing's for sure. If my team, Alabama, if we lost to Tennessee or LSU by 20 plus, 20 plus points, I wouldn't say a dang word. I'd be off the internet for two or three weeks, minimum. Ohio State fans are a different breed, and I'd much rather them get in for this reason. I would love nothing more than for Georgia to completely abolish them in the one versus four matchup. And it's going to happen. It's the inevitable. And people don't understand this. Georgia is on a different level. This Georgia team, and when I say people don't understand, I mean it. They don't understand Georgia is different. This Georgia team's not like Alabama where, yeah, they can be great sometimes, but they're going to mess up here and there. This Georgia team's not like Michigan where, yeah, they're pretty solid and sometimes they can be great. And this Georgia team's not like Ohio State. They're not going to disappoint. This Georgia team is the unanimous best team in the country, and they're always going to play their A-plus game against awesome and just outstanding opponents like Oregon, Tennessee. You saw it out there on this season. Granted, are they going to play down to competition? I mean, yeah, it's college football. What team doesn't do that? I don't want to get into all of that. Here's what I'm going to say, Ohio State fans. You shouldn't be too happy about this because you got to play Georgia, and I would not want to do that. That is if, and it leads me to my next point perfectly, TCU wins tomorrow. <laughs> you know where I'm about to go with this. We got to talk about it. Everybody's thinking it. I'm just going to say it. What happens tomorrow if TCU loses? I'm going to keep this short and simple. Very, very short and simple. Me personally, if TCU loses by 17 or 20 points, I'd say even... 23-ish, 24 points, I'd put them in over Alabama. As to where it stands, Alabama and TCU both have two top 25 wins, and they both also beat Texas at Texas. The committee really pays attention to common opponents, and when you look at it, TCU, they handled Texas. It wasn't even a game. For Alabama, on the other hand, it took Bryce Young to have a game of his life and lead him to a last-second field goal for Alabama to escape on the road. Did TCU and Alabama both win at Texas? Yes, but TCU's win was way more impressive, at least in my opinion. TCU won 17-10, Alabama won 20-19, but here's one thing you gotta pay attention to. TCU really won that game 17-3. The only reason Texas scored to uh, another touchdown to make it 10 points was TCU had a fumble late in the fourth quarter. With that being said, even though they have similar resumes, if TCU loses by 17 or 20 points, I'd still put them in over Bama because I'm not going to penalize a team for going to the conference championship and laying an egg when they were undefeated in the regular season. While meanwhile, Alabama, 
They're sitting on the couch. They're not even playing for their conference championship. I'm sorry, Bama fans. I know you don't want to hear that, but it's the cold hard truth. That's how I feel about it. And it's also how the committee members are going to feel about it as well. But, and I have a big but. Here's how Alabama gets in this thing. Kansas State beats TCU by 28, 31 points, blow, like total blowout fashion. It's got to be above 28 points. Then I think Alabama, you got a legit case and argument. But that is the only way. Kansas State has to win this game by 28 points or more. And that is the only way the committee would even consider Alabama and even me myself. There's a lot more I can say. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm tired. I got to get to bed. Also got to get this video up. Let me know your thoughts down below. But uh, oh yeah, by the way, if you like content like this, consider subscribing. It's 100% free. Helps the community grow all that nice stuff. All right, bye, 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 bye.